Hello and welcome to my new greenhouse. I have a greenhouse. Whoop, whoop. When I moved into this new apartment, straight away I knew that my dream of getting a greenhouse is finally realistic. So I asked everybody online, what's a good greenhouse company? What are your recommendations? And the overwhelming majority of Australian growers said Sproutwell. So I reached out to them and I'm super happy to let you know that we have collaborated on this and they're sponsoring this greenhouse and they're sponsoring this video for me. So thank you Sproutwell for helping me venture into a whole new growing experience with this beautiful greenhouse. Let's take it back to Saturday when all of this journey started. Hello! Today is an exciting day. I'm gonna start my greenhouse build. So this is what the space currently looks like. So we've got south and east behind me, west in front. And I'm standing right in front of my fence over here. So I haven't really decided exactly whereabouts within the courtyard. Oh, hi, Brad. I haven't decided whereabouts in the courtyard it's gonna go. But obviously it needs to be on that concreted area, not on the wooden area behind me. But I was initially thinking in the corner over here, but it might actually be nice up against the fence over here instead, or just right bang in the middle. I haven't really decided. The sun exposure shouldn't be all too different uh, in here because it's mainly south facing. So yeah, I think today, day number one of the build, I think the focus today is really build the foundation because you gotta build a solid foundation, an even foundation, you know, like level. Um, and once you got that right, like I think everything will kind of hopefully just fall into place. That's how I feel about it. By the way, I'm absolutely no expert at any of this. So this is not a tutorial on how to build a greenhouse. I haven't built one myself yet and this is gonna be the first one I build. So I'm sure there's gonna be certain elements that I'm not doing right or I could improve on, but I, don't, I haven't made these experiences yet. I chatted to Tim from Grow Vertical a little bit. He has a few greenhouses um, and he really uh, rec uh, he recommended that brand to me in the first place as well. So he gave me a few tips about the sleepers and so on. And Sprouts also sends out this email to all of their customers with like a video guide. It's like a, over an hour, so it's very detailed about exactly what you need to do. So there's like an instructional video and there's also a lot of like flyers and like top tips on how to build your base with the dimensions and so on. So they've got plenty of resources and somebody's already done a tutorial on how to build this greenhouse. So if you end up getting one of those greenhouses, there's already resources out there for you to help you with the assembly. So I don't need to do that. <laughs> um, besides the fact that I, you know, I don't really want to do a tutorial about something I have no idea about. It is more of a vlog. Um, so I'm just going to take you along the journey of building it, but don't take any advice from me. Maybe in a year's time after I've had it for a while and I've made some experiences, then you can take some of my advice. But for now, I'm just really excited about getting a greenhouse and I want to take you on the journey of building it together. So let's go. Of course, I can't do this by myself. I've got my supervisor, Brett, with me. He is in charge of instructions. Ooh. He's in charge of instructions, so making sure that we follow the guide step by step. And my friend Tim is coming as well, um, who usually helps me out filming a lot. Um, and yeah, he's going to help me build it because you definitely need two or three people. Depends on how long it takes us to build it, uh, AJ might come and help us as well. Enough talk, let me show you. Let me take you to the garage. Okay. Guys, in case you were wondering how I managed to keep my apartment so nice and clean, it's because all the shit goes in the garage. So there's three parts and then I've got the wooden sleepers um, over there. I went for like a more aesthetically pleasing option. Hope that's not gonna backfire. I don't know where to start. I think I don't know. I think I'm just gonna wait for Tim. That sounds like a safe option. Guys, we opened the first box. Look at the... Look at the amount of screws. <laughs> what? Oh my god, my, my poor forearms. <laughs> They're already hurting. Look at the size of the manual. <laughs>
The footing should be level across the front and the back. You can slant it uh, across the length, but it needs to be the same, huh? Yeah. I don't think we need that. Um, timber bases require 90 times 45. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the footing should be level across the front and the back. The front needs to be level, then it can only go this way yeah. because yeah. this way is never going to be level. Yeah. So if we have the front this way, the back this way, yeah. then the sides do slant down, which yeah. aids the drainage, yeah. right? Yeah. That there. <laughs> you got so much cardboard box to play with, huh? Oh my god, so many more bits. Here, LO8, we need LO88. LO I thought it was LO1B. What? Is it LO1B? No, look at it. LO8, oh okay. LO8 and L10. We need L10 and LO8. Alright, so far we're really struggling even finding the parts. Like there's a lot of parts. Like a lot of parts. Help me somebody. How can they be? Is that it? Well, was there any more in the box? I didn't look inside the box. No, I think that was it. Like, how is it possible that we have so many pieces and none of them are the ones that we need? What? That's impossible. <laughs> so we're looking for something like this that goes, you know, it needs yeah. to look like... So, look, this is LO8. It looks yeah. like this. So LO8C looks similar to this, actually. Yeah, so there's only one. And L10 looks crazy. I found it! That was so dumb. It has to be the biggest one. Sorry. Sometimes it helps if you switch on your brain first. I found it. Oh, where was it? Well, I mean, if we think about it, it has to be the longest piece. <laughs> so I just went with the longest one. Alrighty, my friends. So we got the wooden frame layout and the metal bit that's the base of the greenhouse so the front is going to be here the back the side walls and that's because it kind of goes down this way so the uh, the courtyard is more even this way but it kind of drains down this way so that's going to be good we're going to make the wooden base stick out a little bit so we can connect it to the ground and you're supposed to connect it to the ground every meter but these are it's pavement and i'm renting so i can't um, but I'm not too worried because this is a very um, protected courtyard. I've got a wall here and fences with bushes on all sides. So I'm not worried about a wind uh, exposure. But of course, if you live in an area that gets really high wind, then you need to secure it properly into the ground. But we got the wooden base, which is just definitely going to make it a little bit heavier and ground it a little more. But yeah, I'm just limited by the renting aspect. Otherwise, I would have probably gotten rid of the pavers here altogether. But it is what it is. Got to make the best out of it. Ooh, or maybe don't. Ah, oh my God. Clumsy today. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Alrighty, and here we are. So this is the base. We, it's all quite even, it's quite flat. So the wood is. And then we can put the base of the greenhouse on there, which is all looking good. There are a few gaps down here. So we're going to go to Bunnings and we're going to buy little pieces of wood and foam to 
close the gaps because we want it to be airtight. That's just because the floor in itself is kind of slightly going down. We're just gonna help it with drainage within the greenhouse lighter though. Um, but yeah, we don't want big gaps. It's looking good. I can kind of picture it now. It's beautiful. All right, trip to Bonnings. All right, we're back from Bunnings. You can see we kind of put a little bit of foam down here. It was a little messier than I was hoping for it to be, but it is what it is. Yeah, so that's just making sure that it's isolated. Insulated? Insulated. So that there's no, no air coming through uh, from the bottom. Um, so now we are fixing the black metal frame to the base. Fun! This is gonna get dark soon. Or we could go inside and start building some panels. Alrighty, it is too dark outside. Blech. So we're gonna try and assemble some of these panels. The thing is like, as we build things, there's less pieces. Yeah. So it's gonna get easier. Okay, this one doesn't have a label on it, but this one says ZO2, which we need four of. Okay, Z22, there's 194 of them. That must be this packet, mm. right? Yeah. Good morning! It's day two. Ah, oh, it smells really nice. It smells like wood over here. So yesterday we kind of had to wrap up because it was getting dark. It gets dark really early over here at the moment. So good news is we laid the foundation. The foam isn't the prettiest, but I can hide that. So yeah, the foundation part was the part I was the most worried about. But now that it's done, we can start building upwards. So it's gonna hopefully look a little bit more impactful today. There is a lot of parts, <laughs> like a lot of parts. I think the hardest part is really just finding all of the parts. Like there's just so many individual bits um, and there's a long instruction manual. Um, but I feel like it's not super step by step. So if you're like me, like somebody who's used to like IKEA manuals, IKEA manuals are literally like very step by step. I mean, when I built my chair, one of the whole steps was put the cushion on the chair. Um, building the entire foundation is just one step. So everything we've done yesterday was just step one. Um, so there's definitely a little bit of reading between the lines required or like paying really, really close attention to that one image you're not gonna have every single step explained in detail. But there's also this video that you can watch. And the video is great, like you can see them do it, but they don't necessarily explain what part they're kind of up to at the moment. Does that make sense? They just like refer back to the instructions to find the parts. And I was like, and I can't find the parts, they all look the same. But they're all labeled. It's definitely a matter of being organized and being patient. Um, and not rushing it, right? So that is what I want to do today. I want to be a little bit more organized today. I want to kind of look at all of the parts that we need and separate them into the side pieces, the front pieces and the back pieces. So I have them all ready for when Tim comes and we can actually build it. You definitely need a second person uh, to help you build it. Um, but yeah, yesterday we definitely spent the most time on just trying to find the right pieces. Which screw? There's like 800 different types. Um, and so on. Actually, most of the screws were not labeled. That was definitely the hardest part, just figuring out based on the quantity provided <laughs> which screw is which type, because on here they all look the bloody same. Um, but yeah, so far so good. I actually anticipated it to be harder, so I am positively surprised at our progress so far. So, we like that. Alrighty, let's have a look at some of these paces. You gonna help me today? Are you supervising? You were useless yesterday, baby. Absolutely useless. You did nothing. Mm. 
Worst thing, outside wasn't even all the parts. There's more in here. Uh, perfect. LI4A. There we go. So I prepared the next three steps. Step one, step two, step three. I think that's okay for now. So that should be the back wall and then hopefully we can learn from the back wall and just apply it to the side and the front as well. But, oh no, I also have a huge box of like screws and things like that. So let me sort through that. Alrighty, so Bradley, you can come here. In the spirit of being organized, I have a pen, I have little labels, and I have these storage organizers. I bought at Bunnings one day and I just never really gotten around to using it. I was supposed to kind of structure my kitchen cabinet with it or like my kitchen drawers, but I think we just found the perfect use for them. So I wanna separate out all the screws. I mean, things like this, they're pretty, self-explanatory, right? They're pretty unique in shape. I don't really need to separate them out. Or if there's only like a really, really small quantity and they are labeled over here. So this, this one is actually H2O. Who would have known water could be so solid. This one is not labeled. This one's pretty unique. This one's pretty unique looking. Hi, my baby. Are you helping me, my baby? So, while I do this, and I hope the background noise isn't all too crazy, you can still hear me, but let's talk about it. I haven't really made all too many plans about what exactly I'm gonna put inside that uh, greenhouse for now. As I said, I think at the very beginning, I mean, I don't know if I kept it in the video though, <laughs> but what I said at the beginning is, um, that I mean the plants that are currently growing outside, they're already used to the cooler temperatures. I haven't gotten the electricity part sorted outside yet, so I can't heat the greenhouse. So, I mean, obviously the greenhouse should keep a little warmer just purely based on being a greenhouse rather than being just out in the open. And obviously less harsh air flows, I can control the watering better. So there's definitely gonna be benefits of using, of using the greenhouse over just them Oh, hang on, these look very similar. Let's not get them mixed up. Oh, maybe that wasn't very smart. So there's uh, definitely uh, benefits of using the greenhouse over using the normal outdoors, let's say. But I am not in a rush. So I really want to just set it up, get an understanding of it, maybe put a little thermometer, like, you know, the little put that outside, uh, just see what the temperatures are going to be like over the next few weeks, days in there. Um, but I'm not in a rush. Like I think the main greenhouse setup, so like when I'm really gonna get it sorted, that I believe will be in spring when I can really put some of my plants that are currently inside, outside. That's what I'm looking forward to. Hello, my baby, what are you doing? But I also want to grow some veggies in there because I think that will be cool. There's nothing in it, baby. It's empty. Look. <laughs> Sorry, my baby, that was mean. It has like this um, texture, like this grippy texture at the bottom. He seems extremely fascinated. Okay, so what have we got here? This is Z22. Okay, that we need to remember. No, we don't need to remember it because I can pop it on here. I love how my Zs and my 2s look actually the same. There is a lot of Z22s, so <coughs> we'll be busy. So yeah, I really want to take my time. I don't want to rush it. I want to annoy that you guys, probably as the viewer, you want to see like an amazing, super lush greenhouse straight away. And yeah, me too. But you guys know to me, it's 
all about the journey. I mean, of course I wanna have it set up really nicely as well and I want it like now, like yesterday ideally. But it's not a huge greenhouse in the first place, so it's gonna fill up really quickly. So I'm not necessarily in a rush to fill it up because I feel like it's gonna happen eventually anyway. I'm very proud of my efforts. Oh, you can't even see it, can you? Partially. I hope you can partially see this. So let's take all of this outside. Let's set up. Bradley, what are you doing? Oh, I think he's, I think he's doing a pee. Pee or poo? Sorry, Brad. I shouldn't spy on you, that's rude. When I said these were all the parts, I was actually lying. Well, not on purpose. I thought these were all the parts, but I found more. <laughs> um, well, obviously, I forgot the bits that go between the, the metal, right? So the polycarbonate, polycarbon, polycarb you know what I mean. Uh, and actually some of it is glass as well. So let me just bring those in as well. So at least we have everything in this courtyard that we need to build this bloody greenhouse. These things, you know what I mean? All right. Tim has just arrived, so here's all of our screws. I haven't really organized the, I just organized them by uh, length kind of. All the short bits over here, all the super long bits here, and all of the kind of special bits are here, like the door and like the, the ridge of the ceiling and so on. So, let's go. Alrighty, so we built the back, now we need to build the front, so hopefully we can take some of our learnings from here and apply it to there. Um, I honestly don't know why this is so complicated. Yeah. But yeah, I'm looking for one more piece and then I think we're good to go, so I'll put you back on time lapse. We were probably, like what, took maybe like a quarter of the time for yeah. the front that we did for the back. Yeah. So we're definitely learning. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of pieces. <laughs> this sort of get over the fact that there's so many pieces. Okay, let's have a look. We're installing the roof. Oh my God, I'm so confused by all of this. So this, and it goes into the first hole, and it does look like... It slides under it. Yes. We are working at... Oh, that's the gutter. That's cute. Okay. Let's tackle this. Ow. Mm. Timmy, it goes, it goes wild now. Yeah. Oh my god, look at it, the sun. Look at my baby sitting there, supervising. It is looking like a greenhouse now, right? I mean, look at it. I'm excited. Definitely really, really struggling with the steps. But we're kind of just winging it. But basically the problem is the instructions assume that you have five panels, but I only have three. So... I'm kind of just following this part of the instructions, but it means that all of these pieces that you're supposed to get are wrong. Like there's some pieces that we don't have, for example. So there's definitely a little bit of reading between the lines. But I think we're getting there. 
so we need LO4A, seems to be these mm -hmm. ones over here. I probably just one, this is where the window is gonna going, go. Yeah. So we need two instead of four, LO4A. Oh my God, sweet. Hello, my baby. We need six LO5D. Well, LO5D, how many do we have? We've got four left. That makes sense because we've got, no, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Because this one won't have a panel because yeah. this one has the window. Yeah. So there's one here, yeah. one here, one here, one here. But we need L22, nine of them. Which obviously won't actually be nine. It will probably be, I think it's gonna be four. How many do we have? Three, four, five, six. Okay, three on each side. Is this LO6 maybe? We can't see it anymore because we put the thing on top. No, this is LO2. Where's LO6? Is LO6 the side pieces? No, they were LO1. It's the ridge. Okay, now that we know that, this should make more sense. LO6 or LO... Oh, okay, so this is the ridge. And then we got LO5. Oh, I see. Which yeah. hole? Which hole, which hole, which hole? The spare hole. Yep. Okay, so let's have a look. So we've done step one. Step two... Mm -hmm. Shit! What, S11 11? times two pieces? S Is that S11? Oh, I need, I'm supposed to put two in here. Oh. For the AO3 or the auto opener. Oh, we need the AO3. Oh, okay. So two are missing here. Okay. It's Number nice. four is the 22. So we're connecting this. Luckily, we have a screw here mm -hmm. and a screw here. Mm -hmm. And we have a screw here and we've got a screw here. But we have two here. What will we need the second one for? I think you put extras in, didn't you? Oh shit, there's another one. Hmm? Is this LO5D? No. no. LO5D, we haven't used LO5D yet. Where's LO5D? Um. When installing LO5Ds, ensure you leave one bolt above for the L22. Then install the L22s at the ridge in both sides. We've done those. We did the L22s. Is this supposed to go like this? Which wow. means we need to this mother screw yeah. is supposed to be here. We need to undo this and this. Why? Why? And this. Why? You really want to undo this? Yeah. Not okay. Hello my friends, look at it! It looks like a complete greenhouse, but it's not complete yet. I'm missing the doors, let me show you. So, I'm just missing the two doors. So I just need to build the two doors tomorrow. It's just getting a little dark. It's actually much darker in real life than the camera makes it look. And yeah, I'm exhausted. This was a long day. The glass bits, I'm still a bit uh, rattling a little bit, but I've got insulation that I can put around it to hopefully insulate it and also get rid of the rattling. But that's it. Jeez, it's not as much space as I was thinking, but it is super, super pretty. I'm excited. Anyway, I'm cold, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. <sighs> gonna call it a day and tomorrow is going to be the final day i'm excited good morning it's day three of building my greenhouse i think we've done such a good job so far so it looks pretty finished it's not we installed all the panels and we put like this framing on it so you know it's gonna be built kind of the frame and then you put the glass and all the plastic in there and then uh, you have like a second frame on the outside so that's everything that, that's all that's holding it in place at the moment but we actually need to screw it in as well so 
I think that's about 150 screws or so for me to get through today. And I can't find the adapter to make it work with the electric um, drill. So I'm gonna get a forearm workout today, that's for sure. And then I just have to install the door. So last night actually um, off camera, I just called AJ and I was sitting in my, in my office and I was just building the door on the floor. But yeah, I was on the phone with AJ, so we were chatting away, so I couldn't film it, but he didn't miss out on all too much. But I built the two doors, the sliding doors that need to go in here, so we just need to install it, but they're quite heavy. So I'm just gonna wait for Tim to arrive to help me with the installation. But I'm gonna get going and start screwing in some of these screws and um, You can watch me. Look at your dirty bum. It's because you did your business in the dirt. All right, so today I just need to put all of these screws in everywhere. All right, so, and I had this amazing idea. I'm thinking I wanna give Brad his designated Bradle section in the greenhouse. I'm gonna grow him some cat grass and some catnip, I think. I think I'm just gonna go inside warm up a little bit before Tim comes and we can do the door. Hello! Alrighty, I figured out the whole rubber thing. So we literally just had to take the whole front apart, put the rubber in and then put it back together. But now it is sealed properly and it's definitely my fault. I should have just watched the tutorial, the like I have like a little tutorial guide on how to build it. Um, and they show you how to do it in there. I was just I was just going by the paper guide uh, yesterday because the video guide and the paper guide they're not necessarily following the same steps which is a little bit annoying so I was like I need to stick to one well what a journey there was blood sweat and actually no tears, but definitely a few angry moments. <laughs> but massive shout out to Tim. High five. Honestly, I'm a very impatient person when it comes to these things. I just want it to be like, I just want it done. Like now, why does this not work? Why does this not fit? Why is there an extra step? That doesn't make sense. Why couldn't they have done it for us? <laughs> like that is literally me. <laughs> so it was really good having Tim here who actually really enjoys building these sort of things as well. Is way more patient, way less emotionally involved in it as well. So I think we were a good team kind of balancing each other's strengths and weaknesses out. Um, and yeah, we got it done within just just three days. I mean, it wasn't full days and the first day was definitely pretty much just spent building the base and pretty much just finding the parts. Day two, we were definitely way heaps more efficient and, you know, with every bit that you build, you have less bits left over. So you get quicker and quicker and quicker. Definitely worthwhile reading the instructions and watching the video first. Even though the video and the instructions don't follow the same sequence, you kind of pick up little tips and tricks from both of them and you know the end result. So as you're building, you can keep that in mind because the instructions are very read between the lines sometimes, right? But I suppose they're expecting people that buy a greenhouse like that uh, to have a bit of experience potentially as well. It's not like an Ikea, uh, you know, chair that kind of everybody buys. So definitely my recommendation, read the instructions, watch the video, very, very carefully and take your time. Don't rush it, it's gonna backfire. But let's talk about the greenhouse in itself a little more. Well, now you should be able to see the full thing. So this is the Sproutwell Imperial 1940. 1940s does not relate to the era or like the year. It refers to the depth of the greenhouse. So it is 194 centimeters, let's just say two meters. It's two meters deep. Um, the front and the back are 2 meters 40. So these greenhouses are always 240 at the front, but you can then basically extend it as well. So if you have a quick look inside, there's, I have three panels. So the three panels is the standard one. That's the 1940. So this is 194 centimeters, but you can buy extensions. So you can have like more panels. So there's like with four or five, six, seven, eight panels. So you can just kind of scale it up depending on the space that you've got. But 
This is the smallest version and it's the version that suits my greenhouse the best. It is up to two and a half meters tall. So it's quite tall at the ridge actually. And I think over here it's just, un I mean, I'm 180. So it's just under 180 tall at the, uh, the side. So I'm actually really surprised at how tall it is. So I actually have much more vertical space in here available than I expected. Uh, I was actually expecting it to be a little bit bigger, but not as uh, tall. But I mean, I was aware of the measurements. I'm just having a hard time. I'm, I'm, I'm a very visual person. I need to see it. Um, but yeah, well, while we're in here, I mean, you can see why this would take so long. There's so many little pieces, but they have two uh, vents as well. So I just have the manual window opener for now, but they also have two automated window openers in the, like they come with the packet. Um, they seem to be a lot of work <laughs> like not necessarily to install but to get right so my understanding is that they react to the temperature in here and then open automatically so that's great but it's winter at the moment so i don't think i really need it for now definitely something i should consider in summer um, so that the greenhouse wouldn't overheat but i don't think i'm going to have any heat issues for now this is a south facing courtyard so it gets the least sun exposure in here so I'm not too worried and I was just like, you know what, there's so many other things I need to figure out. The automated window opener and calibrating the temperature is not a priority. But you can also customize your greenhouse heaps. There's like louvers that you can put um, on the sides and so on. So there's many, many options and the TMS proper was great in, because I didn't really know, I didn't have a specific product in mind. I actually asked them what they recommend and they asked me about my space and so on. So we settled on this one. So. They're very knowledgeable and great. So I can, uh, if, you're, if you want the greenhouse, but you're not quite sure which one would be most suited to you, just send them an email. And um, I've had really good um, interactions with them. Really, really polite, uh, nice and quick to reply customer service. So 10 out of 10 for that. Well, now the part that I was talking about that uh, probably took the longest and the one that I'm not the happiest with is the base, but I chose a timber base. And unfortunately, despite the fact that I have paving, the paving wasn't super even. So the front is really, really even, but you can see towards the back, we had to kind of prop up the timber sleepers to make sure that everything is even. It's so, so, so important that you have an even base because if you build your greenhouse on a crooked base, things aren't gonna fit, or if they do fit over time, the greenhouse is just gonna be under too much stress, or some of the joints are under too much stress. So the more even you get your base before you build your greenhouse, the easier time you have building it, but also the longer your greenhouse will last because it is like evenly balanced, if that makes sense. You know, and not one joint takes all the load and so on. So that was definitely the most time consuming, but then you also don't want any draft to come under the wooden sleepers and kind of lift it off or like, I mean, it wouldn't lift it off. It's too heavy for that, but it can create again, some like uh, uneven pressure within the greenhouse. So we used just a foam to kind of insulate the bottom so that there's no airflow coming through, but that foam looks hideous. I didn't do the best job at doing it. Um, but yeah, so I got to work on some sort of aesthetic option for that. Right, one other thing I wanted to show you is that the full front, including the doors, are actually all made out of glass. Whee. So the sides and the roof is made from polycarbonate. I think that's what it's called. So it's basically like a plastic and it's actually a great material to insulate the greenhouse and keep the heat inside and so on. And it also has a UV reflective uh, coating on the outside so that it protects the plants from UV. The front, I have chosen to be glass, which is um, like an extra thing you can do. You can do the whole greenhouse glass as well if you want to, um, but I chose glass for the front so it looks nicer. So you can really look inside properly, right? So <laughs> from the display side, so basically you are standing in my, uh, my office right now. Um, so that's the side that I will always get to see. So I wanted that side to be nice. And that also is the reason why I have chosen this exposure. Well, not the only reason, it was also the easiest to balance the floor that way because we were kind of even that way and there's a natural little downfall this way. 
if I would be going after pure sun exposure and optimizing the sun exposure, I should have actually chosen the ridge to go east-west rather than south-north, I think. But that would have looked weird. It would have looked a bit cramped in here, I think. Um, so I'm really happy with this. We see how we go. What I really like is this gutter. Look at this tiny gutter. Like I'm, it's like I, I built a real house just with a tiny gutter. And then it will drain through here. So what I can do is I can collect my own rainwater. I'm excited because plants love the rainwater. I've also, I had a few of these spare Ikea tiles. So I feel like this makes it like a nice little, it integrates it or like, you know, it makes it part of it. So that's super nice. So yeah, before we wrap it up, just my initial plans for the greenhouse. So I couldn't decide on any shelving. I was looking at shelving and they do have shelving at uh, Sproutwell as well, but I, the shelving come, is on the side. Like they only have side shelvings or they have freestanding shelvings, but none of the freestanding shelving shelves came in black matching the greenhouse. So I decided against any of that for now, but um, we'll see how we go. Um, I mean, obviously, eventually I do need shelving in here to, um, you know, to, to optimize the space, to make the best out of the space. But I kind of really wanted to have maybe shelving at the back and then have the sides more empty but i also want to use a lot of the hanging space and just hang stuff so i have a few different ideas i, I couldn't really think it through in theory i really need to see it and like put plants there and assess whether i like it or not now that i've got the greenhouse and it's still winter um, so i'm not really in a, any rush of moving any plants out here that are currently inside the plants that are already outside them I'll move inside, but they're already used to pretty harsh conditions outside. So I don't need to do any extra effort of like creating amazing conditions in here. They'll be appreciative. So I haven't really thought about heaters, fans, drainage, any of that. I literally just built it for now and I'm excited to experiment. I'm excited to tackle these other challenges, but I didn't want to do it all in one go. That wouldn't be fun, right? I want to, I want to keep working on this for a long time. Alrighty, my hands are sore. I've done way too much screwing and drilling and hammering and so on. So I think I deserve a really quiet night on the couch today. I hope you enjoyed watching me build this greenhouse. Again, it was definitely not a tutorial. I still have a lot of lessons to learn with this greenhouse, but I really wanted to take you along the whole journey so we can kind of learn together. I feel like that would be fun, at least for me, and I hope it's gonna be fun for you guys as well. Thank you again, Sproutwell, for sponsoring this greenhouse. I'm super excited to be collaborating with such a reputable brand over here in Australia. Um, next week, I'll work on filling this greenhouse, and of course, I'll film it, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos like and leave a nice comment and i hope to see you next week bye